Hola amigos y amigas, you are now with Jocelyn y como siempre, I am so grateful you are here. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. You already know all the goodness we're about to get into in this video. And if you are new here, welcome as well. If you enjoy lifestyle, spirituality, self-development, journaling, and all of that good stuff, then make sure to click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my weekly videos and you join in on this beautiful growing community. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you and guiding you through eight journaling prompts directly inspired by the energetic themes surrounding the upcoming Taurus lunar eclipse taking place on November 8th, 2022. Leading up to this lunar eclipse, we have been in a transitional period from one eclipse to another. And through this transition, you may have found yourself, your life feeling a bit more intense. And one of my friends, uh, a intuitive guide, a medicine woman that I really honor and cherish and am grateful for, uh, expressed this so beautifully. She mentioned that, you know, often when we talk about eclipse season and Scorpio season, we refer to it as an intense time, an intense energy, an intense season. But really, you know, it's that we are experienced, experiencing a heightened sensitivity, right? And that's why the energy at this time may feel a bit more intense because we're more sensitive to energy, to emotions, to thoughts. And so our thoughts may feel a bit more um, loud. Our emotions may feel a bit more loud as well. And a lot may be rising to the surface and intending to um, grab your attention in this moment in time. And it's all on purpose. It's all for a reason. And I'm, I'm praying and I'm intending that these prompts really assist you in, um, guiding your attention in a way that is in alignment with all that we have taking place at this time. So I'm really excited to share these prompts with you. They are a bit more, on the shadow work side of things, but we are stepping into our journaling session with compassion and grace and love towards ourselves and know that you are not alone in your self reflections and your self realization. And I'm really, truly honored to guide you through these prompts. So without further ado, let's get into these eight journaling prompts for the Taurus Lunar Eclipse. In what ways am I feeling called to gift myself and others more compassion and grace. I feel like this is a really beautiful prompt to get us started with. I'm intentionally sharing this prompt as the first prompt for a reason. And that reason is partly being for us to tap into the energy of compassion and grace towards ourselves and towards others. You know, have you found yourself being a little harder on yourself than usual or than needed or than necessary? And perhaps have you found yourself being a little harder, a little harsher towards others um, more than usual, more than needed, more than necessary? And really it's never needed. It's never, never necessary for us to be hard or harsh on ourselves or others. And I feel like we can all agree that this world, especially during these times, could use a bit more compassion, could use a bit more grace. And how beautiful to think of the truth that many of us are going to be journaling this prompt and reflecting on the ways that we are feeling called to practice more compassion and grace towards ourselves and others. And naturally, when we do gift ourselves that energy, we'll be more inclined to, to, to gift that energy towards others and vice versa. So this is a beautiful prompt to get us started with. So 
In what ways may you have felt called recently to gift yourself and others more compassion and grace? How have I unconsciously, unintentionally disempowered my self because the truth is my friends in some way shape or form we have been our own blockage we have imposed limitations upon ourselves we have inflicted suffering upon our own selves and i know that so many of us have been becoming aware of this uncomfortable truth but the truth is that the truth will always set us free and it is only through confronting the truth and accepting the truth including the uncomfortable ones where we will actually experience healing and growth and expansion and ascension to our higher potentials so let's face it right let's face how we have unconsciously and unintentionally disempowered ourselves, right? And the intention here is for us to become aware of this so that we can begin to do the work of no longer continuing to do that, right? No longer continuing to disempower ourselves and really begin to become our own most empowering force, right? How beautiful would it be, will it be, right? We're calling this in for us to be our most empowering forces, like for us to be able to turn to ourselves for empowerment at any given moment. And that's the intention, right? And that's another reason why I... I'm glad that we began this journaling session with, you know, the reflections on gifting ourselves and others more compassion and grace, because as we journey through these prompts of shadow work and confronting these not so easy to confront aspects of ourselves, like, you know, have that compassion and grace towards yourself as you come to these uncomfortable truths. When I think of radically accepting how my life is unfolding, what comes to mind to radically accept? So in this prompt, we are confronting the ways in which we have not fully accepted and surrendered to our own divine unfoldment, right? Perhaps our ego has felt unsatisfied, unfulfilled, annoyed, frustrated, angry about how our life has been unfolding and what good has that really done for us. I will say, you know, like let's not label frustration and anger and disappointment and really any emotion as a bad guy, right? Uh, let's let's never get to the point where we're avoiding any kind of emotion, right? Or labeling any emotion as bad because I don't believe that any emotion is bad to feel. It really all depends on how we respond to our emotions, right? But, you know, that said, have we been responding to how our ego has been feeling with actually resisting, resisting to our divine unfoldment? So this is a prompt of somewhat acknowledging how we have not surrendered and really leaning towards just radically accepting how our lives are unfolding, right? And really having that faith that all is unfolding for our highest good. So when you think of radically accepting how your life is unfolding, what comes to mind to radically accept? What judgments towards my past self am i releasing may this be an affirmative prompt 
in which we affirm the ways in which we are, all the ways, all the judgments towards ourselves that we are releasing. Have you found yourself judging your own self, right? Judging either your current self or past versions of yourself. Um, and again, being hard or harsh on yourself in ways that may be disempowering you. You know, I feel like part of the quote unquote intensity that we have been feeling this eclipse season, this Scorpio season is the intensity of, again, the ways in which we have not perhaps been so loving towards ourselves in some way, shape or form and haven't been our own best friend, haven't been our own greatest cheerleader and haven't been like that energy that perhaps we may be craving, right? And the truth is that we can become the energy that we crave, right? If we're craving intimacy, if we're craving support, if we're craving love, if we're, if we're craving compassion, grace, we ourselves can and are encouraged to embrace and embody and be that energy for ourselves. So what judgments? towards yourself, towards your current self, towards your past self, are you releasing? May this be an affirmative prompt for you where you are really, really, really affirming wholeheartedly that, you know, after journaling this, you are really going to be intentional about no longer judging yourself in these ways. What currently feels out of alignment with my higher self worth? A lot of worthiness work has been coming up for so many of us, right? Reflecting on our worthiness, how we may have felt unworthy, realizing just how deep worthiness runs and how deeply it impacts every aspect of our lives and what has caused us to feel unworthy. Just so many reflections regarding worthiness and perhaps a lot of situations arising in our lives that are guiding us towards those reflections of worthiness. And I feel like there also have been a lot of reflections and clarity surrounding who our higher selves are, right? You may have found yourself gaining greater clarity on, on what your high, higher potentials are and what it is that you need to let go of, what it is that you need to heal and work on and work through and grow through in order to really become that higher potential that you can, that you're beginning to progressively clearly see and envision. Um, and honestly, this worthiness work really is so, so incredibly important. So I had to hold space for it for us under this Taurus lunar eclipse and have us reflecting on what feels out of alignment in our lives right now that that doesn't align with what we're worthy of right and i specifically put like what feels out of alignment with our higher self-worth because i want us to really think about not just what we may feel worthy of right now as this version of ourselves but really think even bigger, right? Really bring our higher self to mind and think about what that, what that version of ourselves is worthy of, like our highest version of our worthiness is, and really start integrating that worthiness right now. So what currently feels out of alignment with your higher self worth. If I unapologetically expressed my authentic needs, what would those needs 
be. Okay. We've also been gaining a lot of clarity on what our genuine needs and desires are, right? And I say authentic needs because we have egoic needs and then we have authentic needs aligned with our true divine selves, right? That aren't necessarily materialistic, but are more so needs that assist us in ascending to our higher potentials, needs that help us fulfill our soul's purpose and our mission in this lifetime. And, you know, it it just came to mind for me as I was reflecting on these prompts, like often one of the ways that we limit ourselves is by not genuinely acknowledging what our needs are and kind of feeling a bit apologetic about it, right? Like, have you ever expressed one of your needs to someone and found yourself expressing it kind of like timidly, like maybe your body kind of shuts down a bit or your voice quiets down like, um, I need like, um, excuse me, I, I need like help. Like, no, like if I, really acknowledged what my authentic needs are and express them unapologetically because I know I'm worthy of them because I know that these are authentic and genuine to to my divine true self right it's not out of selfishness it's not out of egoic desire it's not out of impurity right it's 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 com- these needs are coming from a really pure place and I'm unapologetic about it. What are those needs? And if one of your authentic needs is like, I, I, I authentically need to make this amount of money each month, right? For me to be able to pay my bills and invest in these ideas and pay my team, like really again, bringing that higher self, bringing that higher potential to mind and really unapologetically acknowledging and honoring what your authentic needs are, right? So if you did express express your authentic needs unapologetically, right? With confidence um, and conviction and clarity, what would those needs be? What is currently one of my deepest desires and what are the fears that surround it? Y'all, isn't it wild how we fear our desires? Like, have you realized that recently where like, you know, you acknowledge what one of your desires are and then And then you notice that all these insecurities come up, right? All these fears come up or you actually manifest one of your desires. You actually receive and experience one of your desires and find yourself kind of closing yourself off from it, feeling like you don't deserve it. Like all of all of these fears and doubts and worries and insecurities and stresses and whatever it may be, come up and you're just like, whoa, like I'm actually, there are fears surrounding one of my deepest desires and this is wild. And you know, we all experience this in some way, shape or form. I feel like it's very human. Um, But I also feel like it's something that can be worked through and it begins here and now through our reflections, right? And reflecting and journaling again with the energy of compassion and grace towards ourselves and understanding that we're not intentionally trying to sabotage ourselves from receiving our desires. It's just that something, there's a blockage that's running kind of deep here. So all that to say, right? Like what is what is one of your deepest desires, right? Pick one. It can, it can be about anything. It could be about a partnership, love, career, home, family, yourself, money, um, 
literally anything. One of your deepest, deepest desires. Allow yourself to really acknowledge what one of your deepest desires are. Bring it to mind. And then take a moment to reflect on, you know, am I afraid of this desire? And, and if I am, what am I afraid of? What are the fears that surround this deep desire of mine? And again, keep in mind that we will only actually heal these fears by confronting and becoming aware of them first. If my eyes were spiritual eyes, how would that change my vision? If my eyes were spiritual eyes, how would that change my vision? I love this prompt. The concept, the notion, if you will, of having spiritual eyes has been coming up a lot for me. And Again, I was as I was reflecting on these prompts, this prompt came to mind and I absolutely had to write it down and include it as one of the prompts that I'm sharing with you because it just felt like it just felt important. And I don't want to give you too much guidance on this because I feel like this is one of those kind of deep prompts that all of us will receive and perceive in our own unique way and Whatever way it is that we each receive it and perceive it, I feel like is the unique way that we were meant to, right? So if your eyes were spiritual eyes, how would that change your vision? And that, my friends, are the eight journaling prompts for the upcoming Taurus Lunar Eclipse taking place on November 8th, 2022. I honestly love each and every single one of these prompts, and I pray that you loved at least one of these prompts too, and it really resonated with you and called to you in your spirit and assists you on your journey, um, especially during this time in this season. So if one of the prompts did resonate with you and really called to you, I would absolutely love to know which prompt that is in the comment section below. As you know, I love creating, cultivating community in the comments and engaging and connecting with you all in the comments. So I'm excited to speak with some of you there. And again, you know, let's practice more compassion and grace towards ourselves and others truly you know let's try to be a bit more understanding and empathic um and really make the most of what's coming up for us right now right like really embracing all of life um as an opportunity to grow so thank you so much for gifting me the honor of sharing these prompts with you and guiding you through, potentially guiding you through some journaling under this moon. Um, as of this moment that I'm recording this, it's my birthday and I absolutely love spending um, a bit of my birthday doing something that I love and am passionate about, which is sharing these prompts with you and, and just creating and, and just contributing to our collective healing and wholeness and ascension. So thank you for gifting me the honor of being brought into your present moment. And I'm just so grateful for each and every single one of you. So until next time, peace, love, and so much gratitude. Bye.